Welcome back to the second channel. Um, I have a little bit of an update for multiple things for you guys, um, but we're gonna start off with the Sega Alls and the whole BIOS password situation. So this is more or less the Sega Alls. I've got it all kinda in pieces here just cause it's easier to work with. There's the chassis down there. Um, and I've got just this EVGA power supply powering it right now. Um, we were able to get a hold of the BIOS password and I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of how that happened. So right over here, you can see this chip labeled BIOS. So this is just a really basic little flash chip. Uh, it's just 16 megabytes, that's all it is. Um, but that holds the BIOS in it. When you do like a BIOS update on your computer, that's the little thing that's actually being updated. And you can see that there are these wires soldered to it, and those wires run back to these DuPont cables. They're not plugged in right now, but they were plugged into the GPIO headers on the Raspberry Pi that I've got here. This is just a Pi 4 Model B or something like that. Um, but those wires were connected to the SPI bus because that's how this thing communicates, luckily. There was no header on the board to access the SPI bus, which kind of sucks. Um, so soldering directly to the chip was my only option in the moment. I could have gotten one of those little clippy thingies, but you know, I kind of just wanted to get this done. So that was actually one of the simpler parts of all this getting it soldered physically. Uh, and then after that, I had gone into the Pi and I had used Flash ROM, which is an open source program um, that kind of just turns the Pi into a Flash programmer. Uh, I was able to use Flash ROM and dump the BIOS. Super small, just 16 megabytes. And then there's a tool called UEFI tool. And UEFI tool is pretty neat. You just open up your dump of your BIOS and you can access all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm not even gonna pretend I know what any of this stuff does, to be honest with you, but the collective efforts of everybody on the Discord combing through all this stuff, um, we were able to figure it out. And by figure it out, I mean, we were able to find this exact string right here. And this string was the hashed password for the BIOS. And obviously that's not useful. That's not the BIOS password. That's a hash of the BIOS password. So you can't really do anything with it. But luckily, while in the middle of doing all this Sega All stuff, I also did a couple updates to my PC. And we got a little bit of a big chungus chilling in there now. And if you know anything about decrypting or cracking passwords, you would know that a little program called Hashcat is your best friend. So I've used this once before to pull a prank on one of my coworkers to mess with his Windows install to get his Windows password. Um, so I'm already a little familiar with this. And running this and then telling it to look for a password that is eight characters long, which we knew because there was another guy on some Japanese blog post somewhere who had the password to the Alls UX system, which is similar, but a little bit different. His password was eight characters, so it was pretty safe to assume. Oh, also the Sega New or something like that? Sega NU, I think that one also had an eight uh, letter password. So it was pretty safe to assume that if I just told it to look for uh, any combination of eight letter characters that would create the hash that we found, um, we'd probably end up with the password. So that's exactly what I did. Um, it only took it, well, dang, I don't have the instance uh, here anymore, but it only took, let's see, maybe it says in the log. Okay, I have a runtime start and a runtime stop. Um, and unless I'm an idiot, I don't really understand what units that's in. But if you do understand those units, then you'd know that it was sometime between like 10 and 15 minutes, I think? It was really fast. I mean, I know the 4080 is a pretty, pretty quick boy, but to crack a password that fast, that kind of blew my mind. Um, but after that, we were able to find it, and I'll document it here. For the Alls MX2, at least, that is the BIOS password. So if you're watching this video 10 years after I'm making it and you're messing with one of these things, there you go. You're welcome. All right, so now we can just type in i7-dax-st4, and we're in. So you can see up here, here's the model number of the motherboard, if you remember from the video. It's listed as project name, which is kind of interesting. BIOS version F5. I do have a copy of supposedly the F6 BIOS, but I don't really wanna risk updating this thing at this point. Um, it's been a pain in the ass enough to be flashing it all the time, and I've already desoldered all the wire, so I'm just gonna leave it on this version. It's got uh, TPM 2.0, so it does actually have official Windows 11 compatibility, which is neat. Super IO, super IO chip. I'm not really sure what a super IO chip is, to be honest with you, but we've got that one. Got a basic hardware monitor here. Okay, this is something I'm gonna turn off because I've got a little Noctua fan connected right now to System Fan 2, and that's just because it kept giving me an error message every time I would boot up um, when I didn't have it. 
So I'm gonna turn that off. Oh, you can ramp the fans up too, apparently. The thing is already loud enough, so we're not gonna do that. Looks like my power supply here could use a little bit more oomph on the 12 volt rail. That's uh, kind of low. We've got Intel virtualization. Uh, turbo was enabled the whole time. That's interesting. And it looks like the SATA configuration can only be set to AHCI, which is a little interesting, I guess. So it means that this thing doesn't have any onboard RAID. Um, so what I was mentioning about using this thing as a NAS is, well, I mean, it's still possible, but you know, like through software RAID through, uh, what's it called, TrueNAS or something like that. You could still do that. Um, but it's kind of interesting. No uh, onboard RAID, and there's no IDE mode as well, so you can't boot an older operating system like XP on here. Although it is an 8th gen, so, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Uh, CSM configuration is disabled, which makes sense because we couldn't boot any legacy OS's on this thing, just UEFI. I think I'll be able to enable this, but it's just gonna be in a different setting. Under chipset, we've got Intel VTD, onboard audio, onboard LAN. Oh yeah, there's two uh, RJ45s on this thing, so you can do dual LAN things, I guess. Enable, disable the PCH BIOS lock enable feature. I'm actually not sure what that is because the BIOS password is in a different area. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. Or yeah, see, here's where the BIOS password's at. So administrator password is where that's gonna be. So i7 dax st4, create a new password, cool. We're gonna say gaming. Can I just turn it off entirely? Actually, here, let's do this. Administrator password gaming, create a new password, enter, clear old password, continue. Sweet, so now I have no password at all. Secure boot is a thing, um, which is a thing. All I know is it makes it harder to boot fun OS's, so I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, you can change the boot order now, which is awesome because it says hard disk and then literally nothing else. So my attempts to boot a flash drive on here were entirely not going to happen. Oh yeah, okay, so here, now you can select between legacy and UEFI. But anyway, I'm gonna enable a lot of these. I kind of want to default the BIOS to see what the default values are on this thing, but in case it's everything that I'm unsetting right now, it's just kind of a waste of time to set that. So I'm just gonna manually set everything here. So now it's willing to boot all kinds of weird shit before uh, it tries to boot the hard drive. So that's nice. And we can launch the EFI shell from here, um, but I'm just gonna save the changes and reset and then see if I can figure out what the boot menu key is. Okay, it looks like it's F12 if this thing is right. Yep, it's F12, okay, cool. So F2 to go into BIOS, F12 to go to the boot menu, kind of just like a Dell Optiplex actually. All right, so there it is. So now if you've got an Alls MX2, you can get into your own BIOS and do whatever it is you feel like doing in there. And I do want to give a shout out to Goylup, uh, or Go Up, Smooth one Zell, Jack Bauer, Ware, Salicor, and anybody else that had helped us figure this out. I just listed off some names that I remember um, giving me some great information when we were figuring this out. If you helped and I forgot to mention you, I'm sorry, but there's a lot going on in this Discord nowadays. But anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I just wanted to do a quick look at the BIOS on that thing and document the password in a video. So thanks for coming along for the quick ride and uh, I'll have more coming soon. See ya.